Hey guys, so today we're looking at the future power plant for ram trucks, specifically hydrogen engines. There's lots of buzz and new information surrounding this topic, so I want to break it down, dissect it, and look at all the details that we know so far. So we'll be talking about what comes next under the hood of both the Ram 1500 and the Ram heavy duty trucks. So let's begin. Obviously Ram trucks are a big deal for Stellantis as they collectively sold over 569,000 trucks during the 2021 calendar year in just the US alone and they're on pace to hit over 500,000 again for 2022. We'll start with the Ram 1500 full size pickup which is the most popular product offered for Ram currently in its fifth generation. Ram has been announcing that they will be bringing an all new battery electric pickup to the market by 2024, so that falls in the footsteps of the Rivian R1T, Ford F-150 Lightning, GMC Hummer EV pickup, and the Chevy Silverado EV. As much as many people don't like the idea of being forced to change over to electric trucks and muscle cars, this could unlock the next wave of power and performance. We know this Ram battery electric vehicle will ride on the Stella frame architecture. It will get the Stellantis EDM number no. 3 module, which the company says is capable of 330 kilowatts of power output. So that means that one module is good for up to 443 horsepower. But Stellantis has said that the Stella frame platform can potentially handle up to three EDMs at once, which could theoretically mean over 1,320 horsepower. Otherwise, there isn't too much info on what to expect for the Ram 1500 power output. Obviously, if Ram wants to stay relevant, it should threaten the competition, which is pretty impressive. So the 2024 Silverado EV WT model will have 510 horsepower and 615 pound-feet of torque, while the RST will have a whopping 664 horsepower and 780 pound-feet of torque. 0-60 to 60 is rated at 4.5 seconds. Meanwhile, the Ford F-150 Lightning has two separate EDMs. The standard battery Lightning has 426 horsepower and 775 pound-feet of torque, with the extended battery up to 563 horsepower and 775 pound-feet of torque. Ford estimates 0-60 to 60 will happen in just 4.4 seconds, so both of those trucks have similar performance to the current Hellcat-powered Ram 1500 TRX. So that's all we know about the Ram 1500, but we do know quite a bit more about the heavy-duty trucks. They have two versions, the 2500 and 3500. The Hydrogen Word was first announced in early March 2022, when Stellantis did their Dare Forward 2030 presentation. This was essentially the company's strategic plan for the next decade, and part of that plan is obviously to introduce battery electric vehicles, chasing carbon net zero, and other goals like that. The one line that caught my eye was in their tech segment. Quote, expand hydrogen fuel cell technology to large vans in 2024, first US offering in 2025, further expands to heavy duty trucks, end quote. So battery electric cars are in the works for most segments, and we know that's coming for the Ram 1500 but it seems that Stellantis doesn't think that a BEV would work for the heavy-duty trucks, and they seem to prefer hydrogen here. Stellantis has slowly been implementing hydrogen-powered commercial vans over the past year in Europe, showing that they're not just focusing on electrified vehicles as the only option for zero-emission freedom. Those vans would be the Opel Vivaro e-Hydrogen and the Citroën e-Jumpy Hydrogen models. There wasn't much more said beyond that announcement until June 22nd, when Cummins posted on their Facebook page. Cummins, of course, supplies the Ram Heavy Duty and chassis cab trucks with their 6.7 liter turbo diesel engines. The Heavy Duty 2500 and 3500 also offer a 6.4 liter Hemi V8, but 75% of owners still choose the 6.7 liter inline six Cummins turbo diesel, despite the fact that it costs $9,595 more. And if you weren't aware, Cummins has been partners with Ram for over 30 years. So at the Advanced Clean Transportation Expo in Anaheim, California, Cummins unveiled their hydrogen-powered 15-liter Cummins internal combustion engine, also known as the X15H. They also announced plans to release a 6.7-liter B-type version similar to this X15H. Cummins claims that it's the industry's first unified fuel agnostic engines. Some hydrogen vehicles use fuel cells to generate electricity to power a motor, but this is the less common variety that uses internal combustion to burn the hydrogen directly. In these B engines, below the head gasket is built fairly similar to today's engines. Above the head gasket though, it uses different components, so that would allow it to take diesel, compressed natural gas, hydrogen, gasoline, or propane, giving Cummins and Ram flexibility with their offerings, while also saving money and parts down the road. There aren't too many other specific details right now, but compared to battery electric offerings from other companies, the hydrogen-powered Ram heavy-duty truck should only take about 10 to 15 minutes to refuel. They should also have higher towing capacity ratings and allow for longer intervals between refueling. So far estimates are 500 miles of range for the HD Ram trucks. Cummins says the power ratings will overlap the ratings for the current diesel engines, 
which are good for between 370 to 420 horsepower and 850 to 1,075 pound-feet of torque. We also know that the next generation Ram Heavy Duty will ride on the Stella frame architecture, which is an evolution of the current Grand Wagoneer slash Wagoneer platform. It's expected that the next gen Ram Heavy Duty pickup should also include a more robust chassis with a possible solid beam electric rear axle. As for timeframes, the 15 liter engine won't be available until 2027. Cummins did report that the first of the revised engines would be ready in 2024, so this could refer to the different variations of the 6.7 liter, where the truck runs on different fuel sources like diesel, natural gas, etc., but that would be expensive to test and certify each one. We also know the next-gen Ram HD trucks will debut in 2027 as 2028 models. I don't want to debate hydrogen versus EVs versus gasoline engines, but I'm here to just give the facts and information. So hydrogen is energy dense, and when it's produced with renewable energy, it's considered green and carbon-free, with a 99% reduction on carbon dioxide emissions, with just a small amount of carbon from burned oil. There's also a 75% reduction in nitrogen, which is mainly produced during acceleration. Currently, around 95% of the hydrogen produced comes from fossil fuels, but there are other cleaner ways being developed to isolate the hydrogen, like using electricity, either from the grid or from renewable sources such as wind turbines, solar, geothermal, or biomass. The hydrogen also burns cleanly in the vehicle itself, which, as we discussed, nearly eliminates vehicle carbon dioxide output, and that would be especially good in extremely busy cities with high pollution levels. Hydrogen hasn't really been considered on commuter and passenger cars because the tanks are too big and weigh a lot, but they're more practical in large vehicles like these HD trucks, which have the room for the tanks and can rely on fleet-focused refilling stations sometimes. Hydrogen fuel cells are a zero-emission solution with the flexibility, power, and range that long-haul heavy-duty trucks require. Compared to battery electric vehicles, these fuel cell vehicles offer fast fueling and lighter weight, as the hydrogen tanks weigh thousands of pounds less than battery packs, and that can lower the cargo capacity, and that's one of the most important aspects for large truck owners. Even if the trucks initially cost more, it would pay back the investment in lower fuel costs and reduce the overall transportation costs. However, one extremely huge caveat here is the fact that there are only 48 public hydrogen filling stations across the entire United States, and they're all found in California. So Cummins aims to work with other companies to add more filling stations, starting at Love's truck shops around the country. It's also worth pointing out that Ram slash Cummins aren't the only ones developing hydrogen products and engines, as Toyota sells the Mirai fuel cell vehicle, GM is building a hydrogen generator for military and commercial applications, and even Mercedes introduced their B-Class F-Cell way back in 2010, building just 60 copies for various fleets. So that's it for this video, just an update on the Ram truck powertrains with a focus on that new Cummins hydrogen powered engine. Hope you guys enjoyed looking at all the details and speculation about this engine. This is new stuff to what I'm used to covering, so I'm learning along with all of you. What do you guys make of this? Do you think the hydrogen is a good idea, better than battery electric vehicles? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Make sure to like and subscribe for all your Mopar content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.